Okay guys, just a quick um, summary video on cations and anions. I thought I'd put all this information together um, as a good reference video for you. So just to recap before we go into what cations and anions actually are. When we have an atom's um, valence or outer shell of an atom, it, when it's not full, it isn't full, an atom can lose or gain electrons to make it full. And we know that atoms really like having a full outer shell. Okay, and I've just written in brackets here, we've got 288. That represents the first shell of an electron, of an atom, sorry, has two electrons. The second shell has eight. The third shell has eight, etc. So that would be a full shell, 288. But we know, of course, lots of atoms have varying amounts of electrons in different shells. But they do really like to have a full outer shell. So another thing to remember, electrons have a negative charge. So in order for an atom to get a full outer shell, it's either got to lose or gain electrons. And atoms will do whatever is easiest for them to get that outer shell. For some atoms, that would mean they've got to lose one or more electrons. For some atoms, it might mean they would need to gain one or more electrons. But whatever is easiest, they will do. Okay, so when we lose electrons, um, it becomes an overall positive charge. Because if you have a neutral electron and you're losing, uh, sorry, a neutral atom and you're losing electrons, which have a negative charge, then your overall charge is positive, And we call that a cation. And we represent that based on the amount of electrons have been lost. So plus one, plus two, plus three, etc. And that's most metals. Okay, the plus representing that it's a positive charge. When they gain electrons, if that's easier for them to do, because they're gaining things that are negative, the electrons, they then have an overall negative charge, and we call that an anion. Again, represented with numbers one, two, three, okay, four, and then um, a negative sign to show that it's a negative charge. And that's most non-metals, okay? And when you do an activity soon on the periodic table where you've got to identify the, the ionic charge of different atoms, you'll do that in groups, and that will show... Um, a certain pattern as well. So, super quick um, summary, neutral atom, electron loss makes it a cation with a positive overall charge, one, two, or three, sometimes four, but pretty rare. Um, and a electron gain makes it an anion with an overall negative charge. So let's do an example. Okay, so I've got sodium here as you would see it on the periodic table. And then um, sodium drawn here. And I know that sodium has 11 electrons. Okay, so two in its first shell, one, two, three, four, five, complete second shell, uh, sorry, eight, complete second shell, and its valence shell has one, all by itself. So, um, sodium finds it easier to lose one shell here, one <laughs> electron. I keep getting my words mixed up, I'm so tired. One electron, they find it easier to gain, to lose, um, instead of to, comp to make this second shell the complete shell compared to the other option of gaining seven electrons which is just too much for it to handle. So it loses one, one electron, okay, to have a full shell, full valence shell, oop, shield can't even spell tonight, jeez. And then um, we would represent that with our sodium symbol, one, two, okay. And our electrons, one, two in the first shell, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. And I would represent that with a little plus sign there. That's really important. Okay, so if it's just one, they won't write plus one. I'll just write the plus sign. Okay, it's a little bit like algebra when you've just got one letter. They don't write 1A, they just write A, for example. So just one plus sign there. If it was two, they would write two, three, etc. Okay, and there we have it, sodium.